you want to go to the race, click the timestamp. Now though, for the intro. So on the channel, we've done countless videos with modern F1 cars racing on retro F1 tracks. We haven't really done retro F1 cars racing on modern F1 tracks. So today, we're doing a bit of an experiment. So I've had this thought in my mind a little while and wondered how do old F1 cars hold up versus the new ones, especially considering the cars nowadays are quick, but not the quickest we've ever seen. For example, the 2012 pole lap, the first time we raced at Cota from Sebastian Vettel, was just under a second slower than the pole time this weekend. Then, for another contrast example, the 2005 Bahrain pole lap was actually a second quicker than the 2012 lap, which doesn't exactly add up, but it tells you that cars that are 20 years old still somewhat hold up. So today we are going to drive the very first ever Red Bull, the RB1, one of the best mods available in Assetto Corsa, up against the current RB19 Red Bull from 2023 in a race, and we're going to see if it matches up. So let's get to it. Eight laps of the circuit of the Americas, and we are driving a force the V10 Red Bull, the RB1 versus nine other Red Bulls, which are all 2023 spec. So, underway. Leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and let's get to work, and let's see if we can hold it down. Bit of luck up into turn one as we have cold tires. Easy does it on the exit, using the traction control to try and get ahead there. Up to Piet as we now head into the S section for the first time. Let's see how the car performs through here. Steady. Once we get some tire tap, I reckon we can probably really start to push it. AI is set to maximum difficulty, by the way, so this is as high as it goes on a Seto Corsa. Nicely done there. Over the bumps. You can really feel how bumpy this track is. Down the inside into the hairpin. Pick up another one. This car is very good in the low speed, as you expect. And now, let the V10 run free. Look at this. Reasing fast. 320, 130Ks. Back on the anchors, onto the back straight. Already into P6. I've set this car up a little bit so it's not completely stock because if it was to be stock, it wouldn't even take the triple right hander flat, which is a bit of an issue compared to the modern machines. As we'll see here. Not easy, but just about flat. <laughs> Putting on plenty of lock. Got to try and use that track control to get the rears to fire up. But this should be fun. We have seven more laps of it. Let's get to it. Right into the hairpin. Trying to get close. We know that we are strong on the straight, so we can use that to our advantage. Tires are slowly warming up. Going to get the run here. Just about. Getting the limiter there. Just about getting the move done. Locking the front, some of the braking, but we go through. This car is a lot of fun to drive, one of the best mods I've ever used on a Soto Corsa. Car's actually surprisingly twitchy in the low speed. Feels light, but feels nervous, you know. It's hard to explain. This time we take a bit of a wider line, which does give us a better line through here. So we take the corner a bit better. I reckon we can maybe get a podium here if we keep it clean. Again, tires are only getting warmer, so that's going to help us out massively. Pace-wise, 37.3, which, you know, if you compare that to the pole time yesterday, is not bad at all. Big lock up into one, but the rear just turns in so easily, so beautifully. Put a bit more front wing on so the car can just rotate. lovely S section. We get to enjoy that and we get the run as well. Up the inside into the hairpin. And there we go. It's extremely bumpy. This is a laser scan coater by the way. And you can really feel all the bumps in the full suit back in the surface. You can see that bottom right bar, the grey one, going absolutely crazy. You guys have been saying in the comments it's a bit too high, a bit too much activity. So if you know how to turn it down, let me know of what I should be doing. 
but to me this feels pretty good. Again, this is a 2005 car, so there's no reason why it maybe couldn't match up. I'm currently on softs. I've put a little bit more front wing on, but the key thing about these cars is they were actually very quick. But of course, in the race, they were fuel for, you know, pit stops, but the tyres had to last a whole race, which made the tyres very, very poor. Now, they would never use a soft or a super soft for the race because the tyre would never make it, so the harder compounds are always favoured. Whereas in this one, because I'm on the soft, we have a lot of grip, and we're showing the true pace of the coal, so we're not running a full tank. Which also helps with running similar tank level to the rest of the AI cars around me to keep it fair, so fuel loads are about the same. I think this one's got a bit more because it's no hybrid in place, so it burns more fuel. But I've tried to keep things relatively similar, and it's working pretty well. Like, this car genuinely feels very nice to drive. It's, it's a handful, it's a workout, but if you tame it and you don't overdrive it, it pays you back. Like here, I'm literally drifting in second gear to try and get the car to rotate through that. And it's working pretty well. Honestly, really good car to drive. You should, you should check it out. Pop the link down below, along with, of course, the RB19 as well. We're just about flat there every single time I can, you know, more or less make it. I'm trying to respect track limits as best as I can. We've just gone over half race distance, to be fair. I reckon we can win this, you know? Absolutely. I'll showcase while well, the V10s are the prime F1 car. I don't think this is too unrealistic either. You know, I'm being quite fair when I say these, you know, end generation V10 F1 cars actually were very quick, as we proved a recent while ago on the um, Spa video with the R25 on slicks, the Renault. If you haven't seen it, check it out, link in the top right. But I want to do that video again, a redo, but with the 2004 Ferrari, which is possibly the fastest F1 car of all time. Again, trying to compare generations is always tough. There's a lot of elements in play. But these cars had no big electronic aids besides chassis control. You know, there's no hybrid system, no ERS, no DRS, no curves, none of that. So it's just pure engine grunt and power. Cars have revved up to nearly 20,000 RPM. Good run through there. Possible corner cut, but we're going to get the run. Get the car stopped. To the hairpin. And there we go. Second place. Two laps to go to win it. To be fair, even pace wise, I mean, we're in the 37s right now. This is a very stock setup in race mode. The pole time, which was a 34 7 from Leclerc, and I think a 34 5 in the split from Verstappen. You know, two and a half seconds, more or less, give or take, I've got to try and shave off this car. I reckon if I, you know, put the softest tarts on, dropped all the fuel out and made some wing adjustments and just tried to refine it a bit. I've got also a higher engine map mode as well available in this car, which uses more fuel, but would give us more power. I reckon I could actually get very close, if not maybe even beat that, you know, with this car. So I think this is quite a fair comparison. And now we're going to get really close here. We may get the leader here on the back straight with a super good straight line speed. Here we go. The wings are free. And the Red Bull's flying. We've got the run. Here we go. On the limiter. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Big front lock up there, but we go through. Can't really move the brake bus anymore towards the rear, because otherwise we'll start losing the rear end on braking. It's just one of them compromises you have to kind of strike. But there we go, P1 in the RB1. And we pass all the cars. Now let's enjoy the V10 goodness for one last lap. I was trying to hit a perfect lap. That's a shame.
little while again, trying to push the brake in there. Still, good fun and race done. Enjoy that. Best lap 36.6. I reckon I could have done a bit better than that, but like I said, not far off at all. And, you know, a two decade old F1 car with a bit of tuning could very well still match up. So it just goes to show how good these machines were back in the day. But there we have it then guys, hopefully you enjoyed, like the video, let's try and smash over a thousand likes, it would massively help out the channel guys if you could do that for me, and even more so if you could subscribe, that would really go a long way guys, we are so close now to a hundred thousand subs, less than two and a half thousand away, literally, I want to do it this year, we're so damn close, if you are new, have watched my content before, I would massively appreciate you subscribing guys, it would really help me, anyway, as always, mods link down below, go check them out for the track and the two different cars as always a big shout out to the members of the channel for supporting all the videos that i make and all the content that i make and finally check out the two videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already but guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see all of you in the next one goodbye